Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Elenes. And today we're going to have a devotional about Jesus interceding for us in the heavenly sanctuary. Let's bow heads and let's start with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for being uh, around us, encamping around us, and protecting us. Thank you for your blessings. And thank you because we had this time to come together and praise you together uh, for your multiple mercies to us. Help us as we meditate in your word and help us always trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <coughs> A few uh, months ago, well, long ago, I came across uh, two cartoons, uh, two double cartoons uh, geared toward uh, encouraging people to respect other other people's relig uh, religions. Uh, I couldn't find them again, I, and I know I have them somewhere, but I have so many storage devices that I don't know where I have it. <coughs> the first one showed uh, uh, pagan uh, worshiping an idol, a handmade idol. And uh, two Christian missionaries were pointing at him and laughing at him and say, you fool, that uh, idol is made out of wood. It has eyes, but it will not hear you. It has mouth, but it will not speak. It has hands, but he cannot do anything for you. You're wasting your time. But then the, the scene changed. Uh, and the next uh, uh, part of the next part of the cartoon showed uh, a Christian devout person kneeling down before a crucifix. And two pagans with bones in their head in their noses and spears and they were cracking up and laughing at him and said, fool, he's preaching somebody, I mean, he's praying to somebody who died. What can he do for them? And of course, you know, uh, we believe in the mad madness of the gospel. We do not believe in worshiping the cross. We believe in praising God for what happened in the cross. Uh, another, the other cartoon that I saw was... Um, in a cartoonish way was showing uh, a group of persons taking food to the grave of a departed one. And again, uh, Christians were mocking them and they were saying, uh, uh, they were uh, making fun of them and they asked them, when is your beloved one gonna come and eat the food? So this, the uh, the non-Christian replied, our beloved one is gonna come to eat the food when yours comes to smell your roses. Uh, making fun of each other, you know. And of course, you know, there's a lot of basis for, for thinking that that's a silly situation, uh, um, a senseless uh, decision, you know, to, but uh, it's part of the culture and it's not only taking food to the grave is not only on the or, uh, Asian uh, cultures, you know, in our cultures is very common. It's during the day of the dead that the, the, the dogs in our countries get fatter because they eat a lot of food in the, in the gray sites. Uh, now, today is one of the most important days in Latin America, especially in Mexico. Uh, the Guadalupana Day. In Mexico, there's uh, no permission to have uh, public uh, expressions of worship to the point that if you come uh, in front of a church and from the street, you, you can see the main altar, uh, the church can be found because it is a, 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 a public uh, worship. So they had to put a divider in between uh, the entrance and people will go on the sides. 
uh, the worship of uh, the veneration of uh, the Virgen de Guadalupe. It is, uh, I think, even more important than the uh, celebration of independence in Mexico. September 16, September 15, uh, December 12th is one of the most important days in Mexico, especially among Catholics. The streets will overflow with people and they will do a lot of things that uh, uh, usually they are not allowed. And, and it's interesting, you know, when it comes to the worship of uh, the Guadalupana, uh, if you read uh, uh, Revelations 12, you're gonna, you're gonna see the description of the persecution of the dragon against the, the church, the woman. But if you read 12.1, you're gonna see a description of the imagery that is used to, to, to depict the, the Virgen de Guadalupe. That's what they use, you know, a woman dressed with the sun and the, the it says 12 stars, but they put a lot more on her standing on the moon. Uh, it's, it, it was very clever that they used that, you know, text to, to, to put it, you know. Now, what have I learned about the worship of Guadalupe in Mexico? Um, my first church was in 1973 in Mexico, I mean, in Monterey City. And we saw a lot of processions, hundreds and thousands of people following, following a, 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 a standard, uh, an image of the Virgin, you know, and, and walking long distances to worship it. What do I learn about her? How about this? The first of all is I learned that uh, there is a lot of people that do this with profound sincerity. They are not fakes. They are sincere. They could be mistaken, but they are sincere. They, they, they really uh, feel what they are doing. In second place, uh, these people, uh, these children of God are willing to sacrifice. Uh, my wife and I have seen uh, in places people walking on their knees, and their knees are peeling and bleeding and they continue walking because they wanna reach the altar, the altar of the Virgin of Guadalupe. In Fatima, Portugal, we saw a lady carrying a baby, a boy walking on a cobblestone on their knees, no padding, yes, bare knees, making a sacrifice to go to the Capelina, the little chapel where the Virgin of Fatima, which is also Virgin Mary. All these virgins are Virgin Mary, you know, different representations. Uh, but these people are willing to sacrifice, uh, misplaced sacrifice, but they are willing to sacrifice and nothing will stop them in the worship. Uh, number three, I have learned that God has sincere people in other falls. And uh, he says, I will bring them to my fall. So God will do something about it. Many will see the light and follow it. The first church that I pastored uh, was in Monterey City. And now uh, one Sabbath, uh, a whole family approached me and they asked me if there could be somebody in the church to give them Bible studies. And then they explained that their job is to get all the icons from the, the parishes around the Catholic churches uh, to be fixed broken fingers, uh, uh, sunken eyes, different things, peeling, uh, peeling paint. And the lady of the house told me, we have been thinking, if the Virgin is so miraculous, why does she depend on us to fix her? She saw the light and the whole family joined the church because of that. I don't know what they do later on with their business because we left the area but they went to the Lord uh, and a lot of people will not come to the Lord 
uh, they will not abandon their uh, uh, style of worship. And at, at this point, I, I, I learned that uh, God will judge everybody according to the light received. There are many that have very little light and they live according to the light. And there are many of us that have a lot of light and we do not live according to the light that we have received. Now, there's something more important that uh, I and, and you have learned. You can see the text and then the, in the bottom, uh, they're gonna disappear because I'm gonna stop sharing the screen. Uh, the first text that I wanna share with you is uh, 1 Timothy uh, chapter two, verses, verse five. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. Uh, there is only one, one God. We know that. That's a universal truth. But the only the other universal truth that uh, a lot of devout uh, non non evangelicals uh, uh, bypass is that there is only one mediator, and the only one that is, can be our mediator is the one that became man like us, that was tempted like us in everything, and but he overcame. He trespassed the, the heavens and he sat at the right hand uh, of the uh, glory of God. So there is only one mediator and uh, we can thank God that we have this mediator. Uh, the next two verses, Hebrews 7, 25. I'm reading from my Bible. Uh, Hebrews is a text that every one of us knows. Uh, but Hebrews 75, uh, 725 says, Therefore, this mediator, this only mediator, he is able to say completely those who come to God through him, since he is always, or he lives to intercede for them. He doesn't take breaks. He doesn't break down. He doesn't have to be uh, taken to the shop to be repaired because uh, uh, an arm fell off or a finger broke off. No, he is always living to intercede for us 24 seven. Or if he has a different way of measuring the time, even more than that, he is constantly interceding for us and we can trust in him. And uh, together with this text, if we go to uh, chapter four, uh, verses 14 and 15, we can even include verse 16. It says, therefore, since we have a great priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast to our confession for we do not have a high priest who is unable to, <coughs> excuse me, who is not unable to, uh, um, sorry, to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has been tempted in every way as we are without sin. Therefore, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness so that we may receive mercy and find grace uh, to help us in the time on, time on need. Now, I, I keep thinking, you know, if people, uh, sincere people in, in Catholic relations, in Orthodox, in Coptic relations, are so devout and so fervent to worship their icons, their idols, and, 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 and pray to them and believe that they are gonna be blessed by them. And they do it with such a fervor, with such an intensity that they are even willing to sacrifice, senseless sacrifice, but they are willing to make sacrifices, you know. They, they in Mexico, they tie leaves of cactus in their, 
in their bare backs. They they whip themselves with uh, 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 whips with uh, bones in the in the at tip and a lot of things that they do. If they are willing to do something uh, in their worship uh, of uh, images that uh, had to be repaired by men to continue being their miraculous images, why don't we trust the one that is living? to intercede for us all the time. And that is willing to, to he was willing to give his life, uh, be tempted like us, which he had no need to, and, and then ascend to heaven to intercede for us. And when it comes to sacrifice, Romans 12, one says, I beseech you, brethren, that you will present your bodies in a living sacrifice. We should be willing to sacrifice comfort and even food to share with others the, the beautiful message that we have. But the best sacrifice that God wants from us is that we sacrifice or offer, you know, sacrifices offering ourselves as a living sacrifice. And as a living sacrifice means that we will do everything to have a living life, uh, a vibrant life. And uh, if we get sick, you know, we can trust the Lord that he's going to help us. And, and, uh, and we can surrender our life to him. My prayer this morning is that the Holy Spirit is going to touch us. And he's going to impress our hearts, our minds, our souls to surrender or whole like a living sacrifice to God. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your blessings. Thank you for the sincerity of people that even though they do not have the truth, they have the love of you in, in, in their hearts. We want to ask you that you will bless them, that you will uh, uh, uh reward their faith and their uh, their desire to worship you. And somehow say, no, Lord, a messenger. So they can know the truth. They can know the blessing of the only intercessor, Jesus Christ. And us that we have had this knowledge for such a long time, help us not to go back to normal. Help us to, to go back to better to a more intense relationship with you, to a more thankful relationship with our mediator. And that very soon we will be able to see him come in the class of heaven to finish all this misery and uh, to enhance all the blessings that we're receiving and make them eternal. Thank you, bless each one of the leaders that is in this uh, devotional. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.